My family. No question. You've got the family ears. He's the image of his grandfather. Just look at that nose. You've got your mother's eyes all right. Twins, I do declare, just like two peas in a pod. Just like two peas in a pod. What did you say? Oh, nothing. Aren't you about through with that? Almost. What's taking you so long? I want it to be as good as yours. Okay, I'm going to bed. Yes, Doug and Don are as much alike as two peas in a pod because they have identical heredity. You can see that the differences between them are much less than the differences between a brother and sister like Roger and Susan or the differences between Glenn and David. Glenn with blonde hair and blue eyes, David with black hair and brown eyes or the difference between Diane and Betty or Henry and John, Henry tall and husky, John short and nimble. Yes, we have our inherited differences, but did you ever stop to think that perhaps we all are more alike than different? Each of us has a head with hair, eyes, nose, and a mouth. Each has a body with arms and legs. No person was ever born who ever looked like a chicken, a rabbit, or a flower. But how do we inherit our characteristics? Years ago, people believed a child's looks and actions were caused by the blood in its veins. Good blood, bad blood, blood relative, are all expressions we still hear and which suggest that blood somehow determines heredity. Today, we know that chromosomes, not blood, are the hereditary links between parent and child. The chromosomes are carried in the sperm cells of the father and in the egg cells of the mother. Each month, a mother usually produces one tiny egg cell, a cell no bigger than a pinpoint. The sperm cells of the father are even smaller than the egg cell of the mother and much more numerous. Each sperm has a head or nucleus and a tail that wiggles and causes the cell to move. The egg cell also has a nucleus near its center. Human growth begins when, during mating, Millions of sperm cells are released inside the mother and one sperm cell enters the egg. This union of egg and sperm is called fertilization. What does the sperm cell bring to the egg? The nucleus of the sperm carries 23 tiny rod-shaped units which are the chromosomes. The nucleus of the egg cell also contains 23 chromosomes. When the egg is fertilized, its chromosomes and the chromosomes from the sperm come together. Each chromosome from the father is matched by one from the mother. These 23 matched pairs of chromosomes determine our physical appearance and our sex. Those tiny chromosomes contain all the information as to how the baby will look? That's right. And also, whether one is a boy or a girl depends mainly on this 23rd pair of chromosomes called the sex chromosomes. If this 23rd pair consists of two long chromosomes called XX, the baby which develops out of that egg will always be a girl. But if the 23rd pair consists of a long X chromosome, and a short one called Y, the egg will always grow into a boy. Notice that it is the father's chromosome, the blue one, which is sometimes long and sometimes short. Fathers produce two types of sperm cells. 
One type has a long X chromosome. The other type has a short Y chromosome. Fathers produce these two kinds of sperm cells usually in equal numbers. In the mother's egg cell, however, the sex chromosome is always X-type. So if the sperm which enters the egg carries an X chromosome, there will be two X chromosomes, and this always means a girl. But if the egg is fertilized by a sperm which carries the Y chromosome, there will be only one X chromosome in the egg, and the baby will be, that's right, a boy. Is there any way that a parent can choose the sex of a baby before it is born? Not yet. But someday scientists may be able to predetermine sex before fertilization by suppressing either those sperm bearing the Y chromosome or suppressing those bearing the X chromosome. Those sperms not suppressed will be able to fertilize the egg and determine the sex of the offspring. So you see, Roger and Susan are boy and girl because in the very beginning one received an X-type chromosome and the other a Y-type chromosome from the father. But what about the color of hair, eyes, and things like the shape of the nose or ears? Scientists tell us that each of the 46 chromosomes in a fertilized egg contains chemical substances that influence the cells of the body in developing specific characteristics. The most important of these substances, which scientists call DNA, forms a folded strand within the chromosome. DNA is made up of hundreds of thousands of molecules, which can be arranged like beads on a string in billions and billions of different ways. It is the countless variation in how these molecules follow each other along the DNA chain, which is the key to heredity and provides an explanation of why all of us have different characteristics. The pattern of molecules in DNA is like a message in Morse code instructing the organism, whether it be plant, animal, or human, how it should develop. To carry out the coded DNA instruction, the molecules making up the DNA filament split apart into two strands. Then another group of molecules from the cell assembles itself onto the DNA strand much like keys fitting into locks. This group of molecules is what scientists refer to as RNA. After the RNA has assembled, the two strands of DNA recombine. The RNA filaments leave the chromosomes and move to all parts of the new cell. There, the RNA code, a specific arrangement of molecules which was copied from the DNA, directs the formation of the materials which make up the cell. For example, RNA directs formation of muscle fibers, the pigment which determines eye color, and the formation of countless other components of the cells of the body. Groups of molecules on the DNA chain that determine specific inherited characteristics are called genes. We'll represent these genes as bands on the chromosome because they are arranged in an orderly manner. Is there one gene for each thing we inherit? Some of our inherited characteristics are determined by a single. Other characteristics result from the action of several genes working together. Here in this chromosome, for instance, might be a gene which influences eye color. Further down, a gene affecting hair type and color. Here, a gene for the shape of lips. 
and genes which control countless other traits. The paired chromosome has genes for the same traits in the same positions. Thus, every trait is represented by at least two genes, one on the chromosome from the mother and one on the chromosome from the father. On another pair of chromosomes might be genes for skin color, genes for handedness, and genes that determine whether we are likely to have hay fever, asthma, or similar conditions. Every one of the many genes along the DNA strand in each chromosome contributes to our inherited traits. So David has brown eyes and Glenn has blue eyes because of particular genes for eye color that each received from his parents. The difference in skin color between Diane and Betty is a difference in genes that regulate the amount of pigment in the skin. John and Henry are examples of the action of several genes that regulate tallness. All these traits are determined at the very beginning, at the time the sperm cell fertilizes the egg. That egg and sperm sure carry a lot of information. Yes, we might think of chromosomes and genes from mother and father in the fertilized egg as forming a design or pattern of human heredity, a pattern that influences and shapes our development right from the start. As the egg divides to form new cells, the chromosomes and genes divide too. Every new cell receives a faithful copy of the original hereditary pattern contributed by mother and father. The pattern means that from these first dividing cells will come cells for skin, muscle, bone, nerves, and other special cells. Each of these millions of cells is influenced by this same combination of genes. As the cells grow and develop, they will form a body. There will be limbs, feet with toes, hands with fingers, head with nose, mouth, ears, and eyes. In short, a human baby. Each living thing has its own unique pattern of chromosomes and genes in every cell. For example, this pattern, different from the human pattern, will produce a rabbit. Another pattern will produce a chicken. And still another, an onion. But this pattern for chromosomes and genes is the human pattern. And it is the same for all people the world over. Well, that's interesting about genes and chromosomes, but where do twins come from? Identical twins like us start from a fertilized egg. The single egg divides into two cells. But instead of staying together, the two cells split apart. Then each of these cells divides and develops into a person, just as if it were a separate egg. So you see, Doug and I have identical heredity because we came from the same egg. And because identical twins come from the same egg, they are always of the same sex. We are twins, too, but we are fraternal twins. We grew from two egg cells, fertilized by two different sperm cells. We are two egg twins, while identical twins are one egg twins. Two egg twins can be either sex, two boys, two girls, or girl and boy like Susan and me. But why is a boy, even a twin brother, rougher and noisier than his sister? Yes, I know what you mean. We know that physical differences between boys and girls are linked to heredity, but we are not so sure about temperament and behavior. Let's try a little experiment. Is this a boy or a girl? A girl. girl. girl.
it's real funny. When I look at the doll, it's a girl. When I look at the jet plane, it's a boy. Yes, the plane seems to make the baby a boy. On a Pacific island where this boy lives, the male role is to be quiet and graceful. A boy there may dance with a fan and wear flowers. So perhaps it is culture, not heredity, that influences standards of conduct for boys and girls. You mean that boys tend to be noisy and fight because we expect them to? Well, that's one explanation. And in our culture, regardless of heredity, Customs as well as behavior standards are constantly changing. Here on an Indian reservation is a Navajo mother with her baby. Among the Navajos, children are cared for in a cradle board until they're able to walk by themselves. Here in a modern city park is a mother with her baby. She too uses a cradle board. We are borrowing customs from the Navajos. I can see how our customs are changing, but how did the differences in genes get started in the first place? That's a pretty complicated question, and scientists haven't the entire answer yet. But let's see what we have to work on. Remember the DNA molecules in the chromosomes it is their unique arrangement in each individual that determines how the cells of the organism will develop. Sometimes these molecules in the DNA get changed by sources inside or outside the body. Changes can be induced by radiation, such as cosmic rays, X-rays, or from radioactive chemicals in the earth and in the air. The process which changes the heredity pattern is called mutation. When such changes occur, the code represented by the original molecules is also changed. If mutation took place in the mother's cells, the message which results from the altered DNA molecules is then incorporated into the chromosomes of the egg cell. If mutation took place in the father's cells, the changes would be carried by the sperm cells. In either case, a mutation can be passed on to successive generations. Mutations which have occurred in various forms of life over hundreds of thousands of years resulted in changes that have contributed to the many different physical appearances of modern man. Mutations may be helpful. As a matter of fact, it is a series of mutations that have resulted in man being different from other forms of animals. The countless mutations that finally resulted in our opposable thumb and fingers have enabled modern man to write, draw, to use tools, and to apply an ever-increasing intellect. Although changes due to mutations take generations, changes from cultural influences, from our ways of learning and living, can come rapidly. So we build on what our heredity provides us. And combining that heredity with our intellectual ingenuity, we try to make better lives for ourselves, our families, and for the generations which will follow. <laughs>